Alvarov, buongiorno, come stai? It's been a while, hasn't it? I'm going to be terrible here because I'm going to keep looking down myself and I don't remember what to do. Um, so wine this and, and the film. Um, I've been drinking a lot of a wine recently um, over the last three or four months called saint Chinia. It's a wine from Languedoc, uh, region sort of southeast uh, France between Montpellier and Perpignan. So you've got saint Chinia in between the two. Does that give you an idea? I'll show you. Um, so here, can you see my hand? So that's Montpellier. Obviously Provence is over here and uh, Perpignan is down here and saint Chinia is in between inland, a little bit inland from the coast. So obviously a stunning part of France. Massively well-known wine, actually. Becoming better known, this is the issue specific one here. See saint Chinia. Um, classic wine from that region in terms of the grape. Uh, cépage, you've got Syrah, so you've got 60% um, Syrah, Syrah, 60% Grenache, sorry, 20% Grenache, 20% Mourvedre. So a, a fairly classic selection from that part of, of France. Um, this one's quite young, it's wine that can age, you know, but these ones are kind of made in a more modern style, so they're, they're, they're easy enough to, to drink relatively young, this one's two years old. So, look at that lovely kind of dark colour there, really, really lovely. 14% alcohol, as you would imagine, from these kind of grapes in this part of the France. A lot of heat down there. Um, lovely fruity nose, lots of dark berry fruits. There's some oak on there. Um, it's, it's kind of fresh and vibrant, but it's still rich because obviously it's a fairly rich wine. Let's see. Uh, Hmm. I didn't want to spit that out. I opened this last night, so it's been open for for a wee while. Um. Yeah, it's vibrant. On the palate, you've you've got the tannin, and you've got the. It's a little bit tight. Um. In terms of the tannins, as you would imagine, for a wine that's a little bit young. Um, there's a licorice there, as well as the black fruits. I can feel the tannins kind of coating my, my palate, which is great. In other words, it's the wine that wants food. With those dark kind of colours and those dark fruits, something like a steak or a venison um, or lamb even would go well. Um, a stronger cheese. <coughs> that kind of thing. Darker meat, essentially. Um, something like a lamb or venison is obviously a little bit more original than beef. Beef, 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 beef and red wine. Um, particularly that part of France, you've got there's a kind of herbaceousness as well in the wine that particularly um, comes from the thyme and the rosemary that grow in the mountains of, of that region. I've not really explained the the, um, the geography of um, there. Um, yeah, you've, you've got a mountain range. It's just dry, it's arid, uh, there's, there's lots of herbs, as I say, there's, there's cork, pine trees, all that type of stuff. And you've got the breeds coming in from the Mediterranean. It's a kind of a fairly special place, but it's not Bordeaux, it's not Burgundy, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's, more, it's, a, it's a more intense type of, t t of terroir, more extreme temperatures, that type of thing. So they, they, make, they make wines with great personality. Um, so remember, saint Chignan, have a look out, they're, they're becoming better known, and... and they won't be that expensive either um, in terms of um, supermarket or whatever you're buying your wine from. San Chini, I remember that. Um, delicious. It's just delicious. Delicious. Now, uh, obviously I needed the film as well. I don't... Uh, I'm cheating slightly because the film I'm thinking of really I should have done with um, a wine from Provence. So I've kind of ruined that one. So what I'm going to do is I've actually got another film in mind for Provence to make up for the fact that this one is Provence. So for the ne next time I'm going to do, I'm going to do a rosé Provence maybe in the next week or so and talk about another film which also takes place there. The film is called A Good Year. It's from 2006. You may remember it's a Russell Crowe vehicle. The reason I call it a vehicle is some cynical reviewers or su suggestions were made at the time that he was doing it to improve his PR because I think he'd been arrested for beating someone up the year before. 
it is a, I hate the word feel good, but it is a feel good film. It's a kind of, it's a romantic comedy, and it's nice to see um, him, uh, Crow Russell Crowe playing a part where he he's still a bit of a you know as he would call himself an arsehole, an asshole. He kind of is. He's good at blame that, but um, he's also very charming, and it's it's a, it's a comedy which you're not really used to seeing. Uh, Big Russ do comedies, as we know. He's, he's a fine actor, one of the best of his generation, movie actors, and some of the finest films in the last you know, 20 years he's been involved in. This is not one of the finest films, in all fairness, but uh, he is one of the finest movie stars, and it's uh, he's got that charisma that oh, you want to make, you just want to watch him. And it's basically a film about a, a city banker, Russell Crowe, who uh, decamps to, uh, pro, to a house in Provence with his uncle, played by the late great Albert, Albert Finney, um, has bequeathed him, his late uncle's bequeathed him this place in Provence where he used to go as a kid. And uh, it's it, it's it's a fairly rudimentary kind of story, the sense that obviously he's, he, this this time that he spends in Provence kind of makes him question his life, question his values, question his life choices. You know, it's not the most subtle, but it's great fun. So you've got the city life, all those nasty people in banks making lots of money, and then you've got Provence all the while beautiful women, the woman more about her later, so da, da, da. but also it's not it, it's not a shallow film because essentially the, the one of the ideas of this film is his childhood was spent with his uncle in this place. It has a very powerful hold on him and it has a very powerful emotional effect on him as well, more than he expects when he first goes there. His plan is to sell it, you know, and of course it doesn't work out that way. Um, it's a really lovely film. Obviously it, it, it's, it, it uses the, the, the Provence... Um, uh, context to, to you know, the, the beauty, the, the grapes, the food, all that type of stuff. It, it's a really nice, um, it makes you want to be there. And like, like any good film that does that to you, you, you kind of want, uh, yeah, I want to go to Provence right now. Um, there's other reasons to watch as well. I mentioned Albert Finney, who was a legend. Um, there's also the delightful Marion Cotillard, who, who was in one of our first probably English speaking roles. Uh, and she's wonderful in it. Um, Tom Hollander, I think, is in it. His name, little guy. He's he's in it as well. He's a brilliant actor. It's it's a great film. It's got some really good moments. It's fun. It's uh, it's moving at times, uh, and it's just it's just really good fun. Uh, I'd recommend it if you haven't seen it or you've forgotten about it. Uh, it's summer summertime. You know, get a glass of rosé or a glass of Saint Chinian, something from the south of France. Uh, watch a good year. So this is the first one I've done in a while. Where it's seven minutes, not too bad. One or two shaky moments, but um, Roger says hi, by the way. Uh, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, talk to you soon. Arrivederci!